Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and it's time for the weekly ranking show, and it's the final show of the year because the rankings are finalized for the end of the year. Let's go check out the players who won last week, though, because we had the ATP Finals, WTA Finals. Let's go check the winners. So starting with the WTA Finals, and Muguruza got through Contivate in the finals, 6-3, 7-5. And both players get up the rankings as well, especially Muguruza. We'll check that in a second. And over at the ATP Finals in Turin, we had Zverev beating Medvedev in the final 6-4, 6-4. So the number three beating the number two, and Zverev actually beat the number one and two players in a row to finish the season. So a great season for Zverev. So let's go have a look at the rankings for the last time this year. And Barty, she finishes world number one, the third year in a row. Sabalenka not too far behind at number two, but Krejcikova, she drops down two spots in the final week of the season, making her way from Muguruza, who gained two spots after winning the WTA Finals. So they switch positions for the final week with Muguruza at three, Pushkova stays at four, and Krejcikova at five. Sakri will finish the year off at number six. And Jabor, she drops down three spots from her number seven spot last week down to number 10, making way for both Bedosa and Contivate. Contivate at number seven and Bedosa at number eight. With Sviontek at number nine and then Jabor finishing out the top 10. So they're the end of the year rankings for this year for the 2021 season. A lot of changes to the WTA rankings from this time last year. A lot of new faces as well. So be interesting to see how these players can perform next year as well considering now they are top 10 players. Can they maintain their ranking this time next year? Let's go look at the ATP rankings for the final time this season. And Novak Djokovic, he finishes as world number one again, setting the record for the most year-end number ones. So Djokovic, another record-breaking season in 2021. Medvedev stays at number two, with Zverev sneaking in at number three in the final parts of the season. Pushing Sidzi Pass down to four. We've got Rublev at number five. Rafa is at number six. So he stays in the top 10 despite not playing for about six months. Berrettini at number seven. Rude will finish at number eight. Her catch at nine. And Oje Aliassime, he gets pushed out of the top 10 after Yannick Sinner got the call up to Turin and he got promoted into the top 10. So Yannick Sinner finishes the year off at number 10 in the world. And a lot of changes from last year. Of course, there's some big names missing because of injury. You know, Federer, team are the two big ones that were there last year that we didn't see this year and some debutants you got Rud, you got her catch you got sinner so it's been a very interesting season for the atp but the big names have been there from the start the medvedevs the Djokovic's, the zverevs city pass they've been there all year round, they haven't dropped out of the top 10, and they look like they're going to stay there for some time to come. So there you have it, the rankings for the year. It's done for another year. Let me know down in the comments below, who's the most surprising for you to be in the top 10 at the end of the year? Like I said, a lot of changes on the WTA. This time last year, only a couple of the names that are in the top 10 right now were in there in 2020. And the ATP, it's kind of still solid, I guess, with uh, the big names in there, the next-gen guys. You've got Djokovic, Nick Rafa, they're still in there as well. But let me know down in the comments below, who is the biggest surprise for you to be in the top 10 at the end of this season? So the season is over for another year, and Barty and Djokovic both top the rankings at number one in the world.